name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sisters and brothers, to prepare ourselves fittingly for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and be sorry for them. Lord Jesus, you became man that we may all become children of God. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered and died on the cross that we may be rid of sin and iniquity. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the Father's right hand continually pleading for us sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Gloria, Gloria, glory is your name, O oh Lord, sing glory, Gloria, Gloria, glory is your name, O oh Lord, glory is your name, O oh Father. Your name, Jesus Christ, the Son. Glory is your name, O Holy Ghost. Glory is your name, O Lord. Sing glory. Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience as he promised until the end of the world his abiding presence among us who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. 
And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord devoted themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. The word of the Lord. The psalm. I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my stronghold of my life. Whom, whom should I dread? There is one The beauty of the Lord to inquire at his temple. first letter of Saint Peter. Beloved, rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or a wrongdoer, or a mischief maker. Yet, if one suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But under that name, let him glorify God. The Word of the Lord. Sing with me now. 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him power over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work which you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory which I had with you before the world was made. I have manifested your name to the men whom you give me out of the world. Yours they were, and you give them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words which you give me, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they believe that you did send me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Happy seventh Sunday of Easter. We are in the period of uh, preparation for Pentecost. May Pentecost mean for each and every one of us a renewal, a transformation in our Christian journey. Amen. For those who are not here, who are watching us, we are celebrating here today the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the Luke's Terra Chapel. Now, this is 10 years after we first celebrated Mass in this venue on the 19th of May. 2013, and today is 21st of May, 2023. We give all the thanks and praise to God who has enabled us to function here. We have recorded and broadcast Sunday Mass every Sunday for the last 10 years. That's 520 Sundays. I am grateful to all those who have assisted us to put us on TV, on some radio stations in the last 10 years, and all those who have supported us in any other way. May the Lord bless you all. Lead questions for today. Question number one. In what way is today's responsorial psalm that was so well sung, Psalm 27, in what way is it a source of encouragement for you amid the disappointments and frustrations of life in contemporary Nigeria? There must be some, people, some of you who are enjoying life in Nigeria today, right? But for the majority of people that I get to meet, is full of, life is full of disappointments and frustrations and disillusionments and betrayal. How, in what way is today's responsorial psalm a source of encouragement for you if you are among those who have suffered disappointments and frustrations in Nigeria? Question two. How does St. Peter want Christians to understand and respond to the suffering of the just person? 
one of the greatest puzzles of human history is why innocent people suffer. Many books have been written about why do the good suffer? Why do evil people prosper? And I don't think many have any good answers. But St. Peter has an answer. What does he want to understand about this? Does he want us to understand about the suffering of the just person? Question three. Name three key elements of our Christian faith that are highlighted in the prayer of Jesus that we just read. John chapter 17, verse 1 to 11. And finally, question four. After the ascension, the disciples were told in today's first reading from Acts of Apostles, they locked themselves. They went on retreat, as it were, locked themselves in the upper room. They retreated in prayer for nine days from ascension Thursday until Pentecost. What is the manner of your own preparation for Pentecost? Are you preparing for Pentecost yourself? What is the manner of your own preparation for Pentecost? Yes, Christiana. I want to uh, attempt question number two. Yes. How does St. Peter want Christians to understand and respond to the suffering of the just person? Father, you've always told us here that suffering is a uh, part of life. Suffering is good. That's what St. Peter wants us to understand today. From the reading, he said we should not be surprised when suffering comes to us or persecution, that we should also rejoice when we suffer, and that we should know that God's spirit rests upon us, and also that we should not bring suffering upon ourselves by doing uh, uh, bad things like uh, uh, stealing from uh, the public purse in Nigeria, for example, that is bringing suffering upon yourself, or committing uh, murder, for example, that is bringing suffering upon yourself. That suffering is not from God. And that if you are being persecuted for the sake of Christ, then you are suffering with Christ, and with that you become so. Now, why does God allow suffering to come to us? Now, persecution measure uh, how strong our faith in Christ is. So suffering is important for uh, Christians. And of course, our blessed Lord himself went through the same path. And even the apostles, I imagine, that is why our blessed Lord said they should go to the upper room and wait, pray, wait for the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit would come and strengthen them. Suffering is important because it teaches us patience and endurance, okay? And also uh, persecution, suffering increases our faith in God and so other non-believers will see us and also believe in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Do, not be, do not be found suffering on account of what you brought to yourself. Do not be found suffering on account of crime, criminality, misbehavior. If you are suffering because you are a just person, you are trying to do the right thing. You remember that apart, before St. Peter, Jesus Christ has said, Blessed are you if you are persecuted. For the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for justice. Do you know what it means to hunger and thirst for justice? That's to suffer. It's to see injustice and suffer psychic pain as you walk towards justice in a society like ours. He says, rejoice. And I always let people know, recognize that the book of um, Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, was written by St. Paul when he was in prison in Ephesus. Philippians chapter 4, 
Verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. 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 Again I say rejoice. And he went on to say, it doesn't matter what you are facing. And those of us who study scripture a little, you see, we study the context. The context of Paul writing to people to rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. He was himself in prison. So, it means that there is a, he recognized that there is a place for suffering. And in fact, early Christians considered it a privilege to suffer like their Lord suffered. In fact, when Peter, we are told, when Peter was to be crucified like Jesus, he said, no, he does not deserve to be crucified upright. Crucify me upside down because I don't deserve that honor. <laughs> Come and tell Nigerian Christians that one. He will say, it's not my portion. But that's an understanding. They had that, they had a king. Jesus Christ says, if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? And he says, if you wish to come after me, carry your cross every day and follow. In a, in a country as corrupt and rotten, with so much wickedness as Nigeria, you think you can really live the Christian life perfect without suffering? Chief, you think? Dr. Tao, that you can live the Christian life as Jesus wants you to live it without suffering anything? Ina, it's not possible. You either agree to suffer or you join the bandwagon. There are no two ways about it. You either agree to suffer the suffering of the just or you join the bandwagon. And unfortunately, the majority of Nigerian Christians, what they do is, and they say, wait till man go do. And what do I tell them? Man, fit die. Yes, Robinson. Uh, the catchphrase in Psalm 27 is the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? In the country we live today, there is a lot to be afraid about. The economy, the political system, and even our salvation as Christians. But Psalm tells us that if the Lord is my strength, if he is my salvation, I should be encouraged that his will will be done in my life. So I will carry on with faith and hope that whatever the Lord has destined for me will come through. And I will stay true to that faith and be courageous till the end. I will stay true to it. One of the things they call staying power. What often happens is that some people, maybe after a revival, people say, I believe, I'm born again, after a, a, an emotionally uplifting revival. Three days after, three days after, they are chickening out when they are faced with challenges. I will stay put. Can you say that once again? I will stay put. Believing, will, that, believing that at the end, at the end it God's, shall be well. God's, God's will will be done. God's will will be done. And God's will is always for our good. Whatever God's will is, is always for our good. Give me a round of applause. Yes, Uraji. I would like to attempt question four, but I want to add a little to question one. The catchphrase for me is the response that says, I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness, goodness in the, the land, land of, of the living. living. So regardless of the disappointment, the frustration, there is that certainty that the goodness of the Lord, we shall still see it. Regardless the of the challenges, the frustrations, with the goodness of the Lord, we shall see. overcome. Number four. After the ascension, the disciples locked themselves in retreat for prayer. What manner is my own preparation? I think like the disciples is really to retreat and spend time in prayer. We should retreat, retreat. and spend time. That's why we have the Pentecost novena, novena. from, from uh, the Friday after the ascension celebration until Pentecost Sunday. Yes. yes. So we should time. spend more time in, in prayer, prayer at this at this time, this is a period, this is a season of retreat. It's a period of withdrawal. It's not a period to be engaged with your phone 24 hours. It's a period to put that thing off sometimes and reflect and pray and go to church. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yes, Louis. Yes. Uh, I want to attempt number three. I can list three, but I think two, or in fact, all of them are linked. Um, the first one is that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God because he prayed to God as his son. So one of the elements is that it is clear it from is. the prayer that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. He spoke to his father as a son speaks to a father. Yes. And the second one is, which is also linked to the first, is that we also believe that Jesus is God because he, there was a sentence there, he spoke to God like, they were to, he reminded God that they were together before the world was created. The glory I had with you before the world was, was created. created. So which also linked to the Trinity. So then, Jesus was not created along with the world. Yes. Then the third, um, I will say, is that uh, us humans, we are created in the image and likeness of God because he also said that we came from him and um, he has taken care of us and he's coming back to him. So I think the fact that we are created in the We image, came from him. He has yes. taken care of us. He has shown us the way here. Yes. He is going back to do what? To prepare yeah. yes. so that we will come. Those of us who agree to be united with him. Yes. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> okay, we have answered the four questions, right? He has not left us as orphans. Oh no, Jesus is here. He has not left us as orphans. Oh no, Jesus is here. He will send his Holy Spirit. Oh yes, Jesus is here. He will send his holy paraclete. Oh yes, Jesus is here. He will send his holy counsel. Oh yes, Jesus is He will send this light from heaven. Oh yeah, Jesus is here. He will stay with us forever. Oh yeah, Jesus is here. I say, he has not left us as orphans. Oh no. He has not left us as orphans. Oh no. Jesus is here. You like that, right? Between Ascension and Pentecost, a period of waiting in prayer, the early church, Christian church, marked its first novena, what we call novena, nine days of prayer. In the nine-day period between Ascension and Pentecost, it was a significant pause. Take note of the word, pause. Take a pause. It was a significant pause in the life of the new believers. It was a period in which they could do nothing but simply do what? Wait and pray. Many people think that to wait is a waste of time. That's why many of us are constantly doing things. Now, to wait and to pray for Christ to make good his promise to send the Holy Spirit. With all that had happened, just think of all that had happened before the death of Jesus and, and his resurrection. With all that happened around the death of Jesus, they realized their weakness and helplessness. You remember Peter saying, no, I will... I will protect you. I will die with you. And Jesus says, before the cock crows three times, you will deny me. He said, for where? The other people, they just chickened out. They fled. But now, with the resurrection and Jesus appearing to them and saying, peace be with you, they recognized how weak they were. They knew they needed strength from above. They needed empowerment. 
Before the passion of Jesus, the disciples thought they were brave and strong and generous and courageous, but after the events, they discovered how weak, cowardly, and selfish they were. Peter, the, Peter denied Jesus and the others fled. Now they know better, don't they? They know that they need strength from above. Jesus always knew that they needed help from above, the power of the Holy Spirit. That is why he told them to do nothing. He says, stay here. Don't move an inch until you receive power from above. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Don't move. Stay here until you receive power from above. At the ascension, he told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait until they receive the power. It is only then they will be equipped to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and throughout the world. Acts 1.8. So, from the Mount of Olives, they went to the upper room. That man was generous. You know, that, you know that's the room where they had the Last Supper. You know that Jesus didn't... He just sent them and said, look, go to Susu's place and tell them that I'm going to have dinner in your place. They now made the place here, their church. <laughs> because, can you see, 40 days after the resurrection, they are still meeting there. They were meeting there every day. Ah, the man's sitting room had become a church. The first church, actually. So, there were the 11 disciples. Who were they? The 11 disciples, the women from Galilee, as well as Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brethren. The experience of their weakness during the terrible events of the Passion was transformed to, to something very positive. As they became painfully... Now, take note of this. Many weaknesses, many frustrations, many apparent evils, God is able to transform them onto something wonderful. Now, this weakness of theirs was transformed to something positive. As they became painfully aware of their own powerlessness, they became more easily disposed to receive the Holy Spirit. Can you see that? So, they, hand, they had their hands like this. Come, Holy Spirit. We know we are weak. We betrayed our master. So, that weakness, and it applies to us, you know, I'm going to talk about it. It applies to us because when human beings are playing strength, when we play strength, we are far away from God at those times. Which is why the God of Jesus Christ gets more people from the hospital and the prison than, than from the discotheque or um, executive lounge of expensive hotels. He gets more people from prison. He gets more people from the hospital. He gets more people from places of vulnerability. God, I mean, God does not want us to play power, to pretend to be strong and powerful before him. He knows of what we are made, that we are miserable, weak creatures. And he made us weak so that we may desire him. It is for a purpose. I keep telling people that in my own little experience in life, what I see is that these failures, these privations, these disappointments, these diminishments that we suffer actually help us to look beyond this world. Because if we had everything here and everything is going on where, you know what human beings do? They settle for this place. They settle for this place. But now and again, every day we are reminded that this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. The treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blues. The angels become me from heaven to Pundo. And I can feel at home in this world. Every time there is a disappointment, we are reminded, isn't it? Every time there is a disappointment, we are, we are reminded that this world is not home. If there were no disappointment, if there is a family, a house, where there is no disappointment at all, watch it. They may be living their life as if here is home. They now learn to pray. They learn to pray. When people are in trouble, they pray more. Not so. They cry to God like children. To wait on God like true servants. So all they did in the upper room is pray or wait on the God of promise. They learn to put their trust in the word. They kept vigil around the promise. They waited for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. 
This was the first Christian community at prayer with Mary, the mother of Jesus, in their company. And this was the last time Mary is featured in the New Testament. Those of you who are interested in study, you check. There was, after this, there was no more mention of Mary again. The disciples were expecting something to happen to them. Their preparation for receiving the Holy Spirit was prayer. They prayed together around one point. What is the point? The promise. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it be. Let it be done. Let the word of God be realized. Now, prayer is waiting. There are people who think that prayer is a lot of noise making. Above all, prayer is waiting. A classic definition of prayer is waiting on God. Prayer is waiting on God. And the mystics of our faith, through the last 2,000 years, the mysteries of our faith have taught us on how to wait on God. Simply wait and be there. A deep form of prayer called contemplative prayer. And it is not with words. It is about just being in God's presence and feeling the, 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 um, the grandeur, the glory of God's presence and the, and the holiness of his face. Waiting is not very easy. It's not a very easy thing for us. The hardest thing about waiting is the sense of powerlessness. Powerlessness accompanies waiting, whereas people like to take control of things. When you are just waiting, you are not in control. But people want to take control of things. In waiting, we realize that many things are out of our control. In waiting, we realize that our destiny is not in our own hands. In waiting, we recognize that our destiny is in someone else's hand. So if somebody is going to give you a ride, eh, you decide not to go to take your car to Tupo. So some person says he's going to Tupo and then you wait. He say, I will come and pick you around 10. Well, there's a sense of powerlessness because you wait. 10, 10.05, 10, 10, 10, 15, he has not come. You are powerless because you are waiting. This is why waiting uh, is a very uncomfortable thing. Waiting is very uncomfortable for many human beings. Waiting makes us realize our dependency and vulnerability. But waiting is part of life. Waiting is necessary for change, for growth, and for re-healing. When you plant maize, you wait. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't hurry it. You wait. The one who knows how to wait, like the disciples in the upper room, is open to experiencing new things. In Psalm 63, verse 1 to 9, we read, O oh God, you are my God, for you I long, for you my soul is testing. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hand. My soul shall be filled with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. On my bed, I remember you. On you, I muse through the night. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. We also read in Psalm 129. My soul is waiting for you, Lord. When can I enter? When can I enter? When can I enter and see your face? Like the deer that ends for running stream, so my soul is yearning. So my soul is yearning. So my soul is yearning for you, my God. Like the watchman waiting for daybreak, so my soul is waiting. 
So my soul is waiting. So my soul is waiting for you, my God. Talking about the beauty of waiting. We don't like waiting, but waiting is beautiful. It is when we wait. Actually, it is the length of time we wait for something. The joy we get when we get it is proportionate to the period of waiting. Chief, we had a wedding two days ago here. The wife was here waiting for the husband that is in Canada. And she has been, for well, almost one year, she has been waiting for him to arrive. So, when day before yesterday, she got ring in her finger. She did like this. <laughs> that, that is because of how long she has been waiting. I lie. <laughs> Sylvia, I lie. <laughs> I've never seen that before. As soon as they put the ring, eh? The next thing I saw was, <laughs> <laughs> now the prayer of Jesus. Before turning to face his death, Jesus prays to his father in heaven. In the prayer, what does Jesus do? He glorifies God, one, and then he intercedes for his disciples. Those are two clear things. He glorifies God, and, he, and that's how our prayer is supposed to be the prayer of each one of us. A part of our prayer is glorify God and then intercede for him. Which is why I am so put off. Each time somebody is giving a microphone to pray and he begins to cast and bind. Pray for us. We are not saying drive the devil. Driving the devil is not prayer. I keep telling people, driving the devil is not prayer. Driving the devil is a command. But prayer is a completely different thing. Prayer you are communicating with who? After communicating with God, you now have power to drive the devil. And the driving of the devil is not a prayer. For anyone who, does, who has ears to hear, that one is a command. You can pray that God should take the devil away from you. That's who are you talking to? But if you are going to begin to command devil, that's no longer prayer. That's now the work you believe that you have power to do after you have Pray. Good. The prayer reveals the intimate bond, as Louis said, the intimate bond of love that exists between father and son. Jesus prays with a tone of what? Familiarity, confidence, and trust. That came out very clearly, isn't it? Familiarity, confidence, and trust. He speaks of God as daddy. In Jesus' prayer, we see the hour of his crucifixion as identical with the hour of his glorification. The glory Jesus speaks of is both glory of the cross and the glory of heaven. He embraces the hour of his death in obedience without hesitation. The prayer of Jesus highlights the following truths among others. Shall we read? One, profound love for and intimacy with the Father. Two, the hour of Jesus' death is the hour when he will be glorified. Three, he has accomplished the task given him he has glorified the Father by making him known in the loving way he lo lived. And in the loving way he will die. God has been made visible in the love of Jesus. Isn't it a loving way that he died? Didn't you hear words of love and affection when he was dying? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You will be with me today. In paradise. Abba, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Is that not a loving word? He recognized, he recognized that my God is there and I can't understand why you are abandoning me. They are still words of love. Next, he has brought the possibility of eternal life to all who know and accept the Father. Five, while he leaves all the parts, those who believe in him will remain in the world, though they are not of the world. Six, the disciples are to continue the task of making God known in the world and bringing eternal life to all who believe.
Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. That head with prayer and head with prayer. Prayer is the master key. Oh, one more time. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master. Anyone who loves God and cares about the things of God must learn to pray. Let me tell you, neighbor, if you really care about God and the things of God, you must learn to pray. There is no such thing as a prayerless Christian. It doesn't, it, doesn't come, it doesn't go together. Prayer is our channel of union with God. Prayer is our way to cultivate friendship with God. Prayer is a Christian source of strength. After some time with Jesus, the disciples soon recognized that Jesus, that prayer was the source of power and inspiration for Jesus. So they said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And so he taught them, they are our father. Taught your disciples the pattern of star. Teach me, Lord, who oh, teach me to pray. Oh, Lord, teach me, teach me to pray. Teach me, teach me to pray. I cannot do without you. Lord, help me stand. Help me, Lord, lest I fall. Oh, Lord, teach me, teach me to pray. Teach me, teach me to pray. Now, teach me, teach me to pray. Teach me, teach me to pray. Oh, Lord, teach me. Teach me to pray, teach me, teach me to pray. Having the habit of prayer is good, but having the spirit of prayer is better. There is a lot of praying in Nigeria. What I wonder is how much of the spirit of prayer that we have. Do you understand that? There is a lot of praying, volumes and volumes of prayer. I wake up these days, Brother Richard and I wake up these days, walking by prayer from the mountain. We have a mountain near us, Urioke. Uh, there is a Dutse near us. And the, in the Dutse, it is either we are walking by the bell, and these days, I don't know what happened. Is it because of the rainy season? These days, the, the, the sound of the prayer, we are in our chapel, and we are hearing them like louder than we in our chapel. And it's, 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 it's more than a kilometer away. A lot. And sometimes I wonder, 10 a.m., people are on the mountain on a Monday. 
It just shows there's a lot of unemployment, isn't it? On a Monday morning, 10 a.m., and you can see 20, 30, 40 people uh, on the mountain, on the prayer mountain. It means they have no, no job. Pretty man go do. They will at least pray. <laughs> May our society get better. Because I, I keep wondering, I mean, I live briefly in Aachen in Germany. I live briefly in Washington, D.C., and I'm saying at 10 a.m., how many young people can you see on the streets? They are all inside offices or workshops. But at 10 a.m., everywhere is like motor park because hordes and hordes of young people have no job. Lord, when, when are you going to fulfill this promise to transform this nation? We will have the spirit of prayer if our prayer is turning of our minds and hearts to God. Some people go to kneel down to curse their neighbor. That one is not a spirit of Christian prayer. <laughs> Some people go to kneel down and it is all about themselves. That is not Christian prayer. So I admit that Nigerians have a lot of prayer, a lot of volumes of prayer, but I am wondering how much the spirit of prayer and the spirit of prayer goes with submission, I hope you know. Christian life is about submission to it. your will be done. The only prayer that Jesus Christ taught us is our Father, and he says, your kingdom come among us, your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Hey, we have developed a new way of asking that God does our will. No wonder our society is not changing. The prayer Jesus taught us is, your will be done, whatever your will is. But at these days, I hear people decreeing for God. Those of us who did elementary scriptures, who did elementary theology, we are shocked. And some of our people, too, are copying those kind of prayers. I decree. You are decreeing God. You can decree for the devil to go. But when it comes to prayer, I decree that you will all become millionaires this year. Yeah. That is foolish. It's the most foolish thing. Are you, do you understand what I'm talking about? Can you go to the minister? Can you go to whatever and you decree for him? Not to talk of the almighty God. You decree. Sometimes I think that many of us who are preachers need to go and be examined. Either to go to school and learn Christian religion properly, Christian theology properly, or go to the psychologist to have our head examined. Having the habit of prayer is good, but having the spirit of prayer is better. You left the house for the past one week. You and your wife have not been talking. You and your husband have not been talking. You and your neighbor at loggerheads. Then you say you are praying. Do you have the spirit of prayer? No. Now, you can have the spirit of prayer if your prayer is, Lord, help me to forgive my neighbor. Help me to forgive. That's, that's, that's another. You are having it, finding it difficult to forgive. So you go to pray. And you kneel down and you say, Lord, I know you will not hear any other prayer of mine until I have forgiven my neighbor. I have not yet forgiven my neighbor, so give me the grace to forgive. That one God will hear. Will he, will he not hear? But you refuse to forgive your neighbor. You insist on your resentment and bitterness. And then you are praying to who, which God are you praying to? Which God? The God of Jesus Christ? You are joking. You are just joking. And many people are in those conditions and then they come out and they are sweating and they say they have prayed very well. You have just entertained yourself. Because the only prayer you can pray under those circumstances is for the grace to forgive. Because didn't Jesus Christ say it now? If you are bringing offering and you discover that somebody has something against you, not if you have something against somebody, that somebody else has something against you, you just happen to hear. 
he say, it's almost like you are not acceptable in the presence of God. First go and sort that out. That's how serious Jesus made it. We will have the spirit of prayer. One, can you read? If we engage in a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God, just as we saw with Jesus. Two, if we develop an attitude of waiting at and attending to him. Three, if we nurture a personal relationship with him, which can be continuous, even when we are engaged in other activities. It is called the practice of the presence of God. Uh, it's Henry there. There is a book written, 17th century French monk, Brother Lawrence, wrote a small book, very small. It's something you can read in a day. It is called The Practice of the Presence of God. Google it. There are PDF copies which you can download. Excellent. Huh? He has already sent it to you guys, yes. Well, for those who are visiting, the practice of the presence of God by Brother Lawrence. So that you can be engaged in other things and still be praying. While praying is better, while praying, sorry, it is better to have a heart without words than to have words without a heart. While praying, it is better to have a heart without words. And many of the, our Christian ancestors, Christian mystics especially, they prayed without words than to have, a, a, that, than to have a, words without us. Those are words Jesus calls empty, empty words like the prayer of the Pharisee. Only that prayer that comes from the heart can get into God's heart because God only relates with us. A heart. A heart-to-heart -heart encounter with God is not the same as saying prayers. It's not the same as commanding God to do one's will. It's not the same as cursing enemies. I say, the very enemies that Jesus Christ says, forgive and pray for, you can, in the name of Jesus, be cursing such enemy? Are you well? And you know what? Our people like it. That's the kind of prayer my people like. Those are the kind of prayers they say, powerful prayer. It just shows that my people are just traditional African worshippers, pure and simple, and they just put a, a garb of Christianity. I mean, Jesus was very clear on the issue of not having enemies or forgiving anyone who hurts you. He was very, very clear on praying rather for the person that has done you terribly. Then you can use the name of that Jesus to curse somebody, to wish somebody evil. Come on. That's blasphemy. That's pure blasphemy, nothing else. And yet, I will say, that as these people are sitting down here, many of these people will call the person who prays like that powerful man of God. That is because we have not really embraced the ways of Jesus Christ. We have not embraced the values of Jesus. We have enlisted in Christianity, but we are yet, many of us are yet to really embrace Jesus. As Christians, we have been given only one model of prayer, and it is what? The prayer of Jesus. We learn from Jesus that prayer consists not in binding God's, in, in binding God's will down to us, but in lifting our will up to God. Uh -huh. It is not like this. It is like this. Prayer is good. But when used as a substitute for obedience, it is nothing but manipulation. Our people have not distinguished between what used to be called traditional magic. Magic. And Christian prayer. So people come to me. The person may be living in fornication. The person may be living in a life of adultery. The person may be living uh, a life of hatred. The person may be a corrupt Nigerian who is busy stealing the country dry. And he comes, he has a problem and says, please, father, Tell me which psalm I am to say for this problem. And when I say this psalm, where should I face to say it? 
What time of the night should I get up to say it? Should I have my clothes on or should I pray it naked? Have you not heard that kind of thing before? The white man calls that one magic. It has nothing to do with Christian prayer at all. It's called magic. You see, there are, I hope you know that there is Christian prayer which works a lot. Then there is psychic power in nature. Human beings have the capacity to, to get some power, spiritual powers, to work. To manipulate, that's the word, to manipulate nature. Human beings have that capacity. Don't confuse that with prayer. Don't confuse that. And what my people are doing is confusing it with prayer. Which is why anybody who does wonder, wonder is a man of God. And yet, the Lord has cautioned us to have the spirit of discernment. But, come on. My, my brothers and sisters. That's why I do say here, here, you know, one or two young people here who don't like me to say some people are foolish. <laughs> I mean, you ask yourself, if people are not using their brains, are they not foolish? And many Nigerians are not using their brains. Just anyone, anybody that just comes up and is doing wonder. Wonders have been done in the world long before Jesus Christ came. And wonders will continue to be done. You know, as people are running from one deliverance place to the other in the Christian church, you know what happened? The Muslim, some Muslim young people also started deliverance sessions. They, have you people not seen it? Yes. Uh, and people are rolling on the ground in exactly the same way as they are rolling on the ground church. Aha! When I saw it, I said, now, Q-E-D. You can now see that you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be a Christian to make people roll on the ground. He stands best who kneels most. Let me conclude this by saying that the amount of time that we are spending, a lot of us are spending on the phone and on social media, is destroying the possibility of having a life of prayer. There are people, including some of you here, who do not recognize that the phone has a switch. And who must answer phone every time. And many people are now so addicted that if after five minutes they don't hear a noise, they go to phone to check whether there's a text. And they don't know that that is what is called addiction. It will mess up your life. My classmates just put something on the WhatsApp about somebody who, people who are so addicted to the phone. Once the phone rings, there's something in their brain that rings that they must grab it. And you go and run in the bathroom and then you fall and collapse. And, 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 and. That when you are going to the bathroom, it is not a place for phone. So, learn to control your use of phone. What did we decide in this chapel? For, for those who are loyal to my command. We decided that Sunday after mass, when you get home, put off your phone. Spend the time with your family and, and reflect on what you, uh, you have learned. And re let the phone rest and your mind also rest for the rest of the Sunday. Tell all your friends that Sunday afternoon to evening, my phone is not on. And eventually, all your friends will know. Somebody calls and says, I, I called, I called, I, I tried to reach you today. Where, where did you go? I said, I'm not a phone operator. <laughs> Even phone operators, they serve duties, isn't it? In those days, they are, they are shifts. They serve shifts. When they are not on shift, they don't have to be using their phone. So let us learn that and may the Lord help us. Scripture passages for our reflection. See the prayer of Abraham. Abraham petitions good over the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis chapter 18. Abraham's prayer was, um, was intimate. It was a, an intimate discussion between two friends. Genesis 18, 20 to 33. Jesus' prayer, practice of prayer. Early in the morning, we are told, long before dawn, he got up and went to a lonely place and prayed there. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And Jesus teaches his disciples on how to pray in Matthew 6, 7 to 18. 
And then what we are reading now, part of which we read today, is Jesus' high priestly prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you, glorify your holy name. Thank you for your love and your goodness. Thank you for today. As we mark 10 years of Luke's terror chapel, from the first time we said mass in this venue, we thank you for a successful 10-year period of not only celebrating the liturgy, but also recording them for TV and broadcasting them these last 10 years. May your name be praised forever. We pray for all those who have made this possible, for all those who have contributed in any way. Bless them, Lord. Bless their families. Bless their workplaces. And Lord, as we give you thanks today, we ask you to show us the way forward. Let it all be to the glory of your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us rise. I believe in one God. Our Lord Jesus Christ glorified his Father by faithfully accomplishing the saving mission he came to fulfill on earth. Let us pray for the grace to be zealous in carrying out the work of evangelization entrusted to us by Christ. For the church, that ordained ministers, religious men and women, and lay persons involved in apostolic work may understand how to promote missionary enthusiasm among the people entrusted to their care. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, that like the apostles, they may be conscious of the need to work for unity and the common good of the people they have been called to serve. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people, that they may learn to use modern means of social communications for their personal growth, the propagation of the gospel, and foster unity in the world. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord for this worshiping community, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, there may be a spiritual reawakening in us, so that through us, more persons may come to know and accept the only true God. We pray, O oh Lord, Lord hear our prayer. for the dead, especially those of our parish community and family members, that they may find eternal rest with the Lord. 
We pray, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the evangelization and leadership development programs of the Luke Sterra Leadership Foundation and for the intentions of its partners and benefactors. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray in silence for our private intentions. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of the Risen Lord, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us as sinners, now and at the hour of our death. O God, our Heavenly Father, you glorified your Son through his death and resurrection. In your mercy, Hear our prayers and grant that at the end of our earthly lives we may come to share in that same glory through Christ our Lord. sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after the resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us share us in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of hosts, heaven and You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, save us, save our people, for by your cross and resurrection, you have Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, our Bishop, Anselm, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Suffice as a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries, they will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ our head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I said at the beginning of the homily, we mark today the 10th anniversary of Mass in this location. Uh, all those who are watching us, join us in thanking God for 10 years of unbroken liturgy, <coughs> recording, and the broadcast of our Mass and homilies. May the Lord receive all the thanks and praise. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks.